This video will discuss the Zeeman effect, where the energy levels of the hydrogen atom atomic orbitals are split based off the value of their quantum number m. So our quantum, our quantum mechanical model system for the hydrogen atom has our proton fixed at the origin, charge of plus e, mass of mp. Our electron has a charge of negative e and a mass of me and it is some distance r away from our proton, free to move in three-dimensional space. So our Hamiltonian is equal to our kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over two times mass of the electron times the Laplacian operator, del squared, plus the potential energy. These are opposite charges, so they will attract in their Coulomb potential. Coulomb potential is charge one, charge two over four pi epsilon naught times distance. So that gives us negative E squared over four pi epsilon naught R. The energy depends only on the principal quantum number N. Our wave function psi depends on three quantum numbers, N, L, and M, and is a function of the spherical polar coordinates R, theta, and phi. So the energy as a function the energy as a function of the principal quantum number n equals minus mass of the electron times charge of the electron to the fourth over 32 pi squared permittivity of free space epsilon naught squared times Planck's constant over 2 pi h bar squared times 1 over n squared our principal quantum number which starts at 1 and goes up as an integer to infinity then the value of the quantum number L for a given value of n is an integer between 0 and n. And for a given value of quantum number L, our quantum number n is an integer between minus L and plus L. So this video is interested in effects that occur due to a magnetic field. So let's assume that our proton, our electron here is rotating around our proton. And for now, let's say it's a perfect circle. So we have a velocity vector, which is always perpendicular to this r vector. And we're moving around, we're rotating around the z-axis in a perfect circle. And we've got a magnetic field in the positive z direction. So what we're interested in is the magnetic dipole m created by this magnetic field that is interacting with our electron. So the magnetic dipole is equal to i times a. So the current that we create with this electron times the area of this circle. So the current is equal to the charge times how fast it's moving. So that's the charge times velocity over 2 pi r. So 2 pi r is the, is the circumference of this circle. Velocity v, how fast we're moving. Q, the charge of our particle. And the area of the circle is pi r squared. So this r cancels with that squared, this pi with that pi. So the magnetic dipole of a charge moving in a perfect circle is going to be equal to the charge times velocity times radius over 2. Now the current, as we said, was equal to qv over 2 pi r. Area was equal to pi r squared. So the angular momentum operator is equal to the radius vector and its cross product with the momentum vector. So remember that momentum is mass times velocity. So this is equal to the mass times the cross product of the radius vector with the velocity vector, cross product of this and this. So that is equal to our magnetic dipole vector is equal to the charge of our particle times the radius vector cross product with the velocity vector over 2 whenever we have non-perfect circular motion. So this is equal to the charge divided by 2 times the mass times the angular momentum vector. So using this math we can factor this into this kind of form. So our charge here is the charge of the electron, negative e. Our mass is the mass of the electron, me. I believe I need a factor of 2 here. Let's toss that in. Times the angular momentum. All right, so what potential energy does our particle feel when it ends up being in a magnetic field? 
So our magnetic field has acted upon the particle, and we have some magnetic dipole that the particle creates. The potential energy is the negative dot product of the magnetic dipole vector with the magnetic field. Now let's assume that the magnetic field only exists in the z direction, only exists in the positive z direction. Now our potential energy, which our electron feels due to the magnetic field in the z direction, is minus the z component of the magnetic dipole times the z component of our magnetic field. So this is equal to, we have our magnetic dipole, which is this, so we go from angular momentum to the z component of angular momentum, z component of our magnetic field. Uh, we have our electron. We have mi a minus sign here and a minus sign there that cancel. And then two times mass of the electron. So our magnetic potential is equal to charge of the electron times B z component of the magnetic field over two times the mass of the electron times its angular momentum in the z direction. So now we can build a Hamiltonian where we have our reference Hamiltonian being this uh, kinetic plus potential energy operator, kinetic energy plus Coulomb potential. But now we add into it our magnetic potential, which in operator form goes from EBZ over 2MELZ to now we have the LZ operator which is the z component of the angular momentum. Now luckily for us, our wave functions are already eigenfunctions of the z component of the angular momentum. Lz psi nlm equals h bar m times psi nlm. It just depends on what the value of the quantum number m is. So now our total Hamiltonian acting on psi nlm will equal e which is now a function of n and m times psi and lm. So our E is our original energy of our hydrogen atom plus the charge of the electron times strength of the magnetic field times h bar over two times mass of the electron times quantum number m times psi and lm. Now to simplify this a little bit, we can define the quantity beta b which equals E h bar over 2 me, charge of the electron, reduced Planck's constant, mass of the electron. If you plug these all together, this gives you 9.274 times 10 to the minus 24 joules per Tesla. Joule is a unit of energy. Tesla is a unit of magnetic field. So for every unit of magnetic field, one Tesla, we generate this many joules of energy of splitting. So this value beta b is called the Bohr magneton and is defined in terms of these fundamental physical constants. So now our total energy is a function of the quantum numbers n and m. E and m equals E sub n, our original hydrogen atom energy, plus the quantum number m times the Bohr magneton times the z component of our magnetic field. So what this has done it by making E a function of N and M is we have so-called lifted the degeneracy of the values of M. So if we have a wave function of our hydrogen atomic orbitals where M equals zero, then for, ex for S functions, for example, then adding a magnetic field going from no B to B doesn't change any of our energies. S functions are unaffected by magnetic fields. They have no magnetic dipole. For a set of p orbitals, they have values of 1, 0, and minus 1 for m. Put those in a magnetic field, and they'll separate based off their values of m. m equals minus 1 goes down by beta b, b, z. m equals 1 goes up by beta b, b, z. m equals 0 stays the same. For d orbitals, they have five values of m, and those get split into five unique energy levels, each of them beta b, b, z apart. So the trend becomes apparent here. Same for f orbitals, g orbitals. The diagram just gets more and more energy levels, all depending on the values of m, as once we have applied a magnetic field, we have lifted the degeneracy of our energy levels to add a dependence on the quantum number m, which is related to the Bohr magneton, that quantum number, and the strength of the magnetic field.